Hello, and welcome to the November Astrology Forecast. I've decided to go ahead and record these as an audio version because I've run all the charts and I've done all the work. My furniture and equipment will not arrive until sometime next week. I also start back with my clients on October 19th. So the rest of my October schedule is very tight. And so I thought, why not just go ahead and get these done while I'm sitting here waiting for my furniture because I'm ready to go. I love this new area I've moved into. I can see the Milky Way at night. So I'm really excited about what I'm doing. I'm thrilled about the astrology coming up here in November and especially December and 2017. There is a new wave of energy coming in that we haven't seen before that is absolutely uh, brilliant. And so I really want to get, get in here and do what I do. So thank you for your patience. I'll be back in November in front of the camera. And I'm excited to be with you. So let's get started. Enjoy and keep looking up. Hi Leo, welcome to your November astrology forecast. In November, the urge to purge is strong. It is house cleaning time. And this empowers you to feel stronger in yourself, in your home, in your work, and in your life. Pay attention to who or what is pushing your buttons this month. Do not step over the red flags. If a red flag comes up, that's your intuition telling you, look at this. And is this working for you? Is this right for you? Because if the buttons get pushed, the lions can move into anger. And then that anger turns into the roar. And when you roar, others really need to look out. <laughs> so really look at what do you need so when that comes up for you when others are pushing your buttons and and issues are coming up issues from your past can be coming up issues from childhood issues from past lives can start um coming up for you ask yourself okay what is, what is this for me you know was i betrayed was there an injustice was i um you know not treated right you know what's coming up for you and what can you do to empower yourself what can you do to be really present for yourself and doing what takes care of you your soul is speaking to you through your needs and this is going to be a very um, important time for you because Scorpio rules your foundation Scorpio rules that area of your life that has to do with your inner being how you nurture yourself how you feed yourself and um, take care of you and strengthen you the stronger the foundation the stronger the life the stronger the personal foundation the stronger the inner being the more you can achieve in the world. This is the area of your personal power. It's a very intimate part of you and your life. And, you know, it is going to bring things up so that you have that opportunity to love you more, take care of you, and heal. Now, as you move into November, the sun is in positive energy flow with Neptune. The sun is your ruling planet. And so this is a very good energy for you. And it is nurturing and 
beautiful. And it has to do with the Scorpio new moon that took place on October 30th in this area for you. And that was a beautiful new moon. It was uh, the sun and the moon and Mercury, the messenger coupled together in positive energy flow with Neptune in the area of partnership, partners, resources, and the deeper mysteries, the deeper part of you. And so having that in positive energy for you is a very nurturing and healing energy. So I do like this energy uh, for you. However, it doesn't mean that um, things aren't coming up for trans, trans, transformation or transmutation, right? Let it come up, let it go out and release it. Make sure you're making right choices for you. Mars enters Aquarius on the 8th and Aquarius is your opposite sign. And so that brings the action to relationships, other people, people you consult, contracts. So there could be a male in your life that is empowering you, uh, encouraging you to be more than you can be, do more than you think you can do encouraging you to you know go after your goals go after what it is you want go after your highest aspirations and this person can really be helping you venus enters capricorn on the 11th and this is the area of work for you and health and so this can improve health wherever Venus is. She makes things better. And so uh, this can improve your health. This can improve your energy level. This can improve your work. This is a very positive energy for you. Mercury enters Sagittarius on the 12th. And Sagittarius rules the fun part of your life. Sagittarius is uh, where you... Uh, experience, true love, uh, romance, creative self-expression, taking chances, self-confidence, your children, inner child. So this is a, a beautiful energy for you because Sagittarius is a sister sign and it pours positive energy into any planets you have in Leo your sun in Leo, your moon in Leo. So as we move into Sagittarius, you really begin to feel strong. So it's really important this first three weeks of uh, November to focus on purging, strengthening, building you up, building your energy up, building your reserves up, your emotional reserves, your physical reserves, your financial reserves, build them up so that when you get to Sagittarius, you can celebrate, you can party, you can have fun and be incredibly creative. Then that brings you to the Taurus full moon on the 14th. Now I like this full moon. There's no challenging aspects to it. And it is in positive energy flow with Pluto, powerful Pluto in the area of work and Chiron, the asteroid who acts like a planet in your astrology in the area of shared resources. So you get one new moon in this area of your life and you get one full moon in this area of your life. And this is the area of your life that has to do with your destiny in the world your reputation in the world, your profession in the world, your achievement in the world, your passion in the world, your outward contribution to society. And as you build your inner strength with Scorpio, as you achieve your goals in the world, you see, so it's, it's like, okay, Starting in October, when that sun enters Scorpio, build your foundation. Stronger the foundation, by the time you get to that Taurus full moon on the 14th, you're achieving your goals in the world. You're achieving things in the world. You're achieving what you want to achieve. And that can be, you know, whether you own your own business or you're working for someone else or you're retired. Because 
Taurus rules your outward contribution to society. And so, you know, it can be volunteer work. It can be, you know, anything that you do that defines you through your presence in the world. And this is a very positive energy for you because that Pluto is in the area of work and service. So for some of you, you can be feeling really satisfied that your work is going well, you're feeling good, your health is improving, and you're beginning to see the fruits of your labor and uh, or you're seeing something come to fruition. Full moons bring things to fruition. They bring things to completion. So there's something that you're completing around the 14th that is very exciting for you and making you very happy and you're you're really looking forward to it so you know Scorpio brings those deepest desires to the surface so you know late October and first part of November you're really looking at what are my deepest desires what do I secretly wish for that I haven't even told anybody and then that Taurus full moon highlights that destiny of yours, what your destiny is in the world. I like this moon because it's really open and it's bringing your attention to what you love and value about what you do. You know, what you love and value about the work that you're doing. The value you're receiving from what you do. So think about how you're using your energy, your time, your resources to achieve your destiny in the world. Very exciting. Very exciting. Now, Scorpio also says, okay, you know, uh, purge, right? So this is about releasing what no longer serves you. Perhaps you need to forgive yourself for something. Perhaps you need to forgive others for something. And it is time to forgive and move on. And so, you know, because when you do that, it lightens you up, right? So then you are lighter. You feel lighter. You feel better, right? You travel light. You, you know, you live the light. You spread the light. You love the light. It's being light. So time to cleanse and purge so that you feel lighter and that you're fully available for the energy of Sagittarius, which is a very strong time of the year for you and exciting. You're going to love December and 2017. I'm very excited about this new wave of energy that's coming in because Leo's are really getting a step up. They're getting a total boost. I mean, all the signs are, but especially Leo's because Saturn is in Sagittarius, Uranus is in Aries, Jupiter is in Libra, and all of that pours positive energy into any planets you have in Leo, your sun in Leo, your moon in Leo, your rising Leo. And so with all of this positive energy pouring into you, the gifts from the gods are going to blow your mind. It's, you can have amazing breakthroughs next year. And I'm going to be doing some webinars on this because I want to help people really gear up for this energy because you got to take advantage of it. And this is once in a lifetime energy coming in. So we really need to rock and roll in 2017. And it starts in December. So I can't wait to come back and do the December forecasts with you. Now, Neptune moves direct on the 19th. It's a subtle energy, but it's an important uh, event because uh, Neptune is extremely powerful in his own sign, Pisces. Neptune rules Pisces, and he has been uh, you know, wreaking havoc this year in 2016 with him washing over Saturn and everybody else. <laughs> creating a lot of confusion and deception and uh, miscommunication. And so he's a major player. Now, the sun enters your sister sign, Sagittarius, on the 21st. Woohoo! And that's really good because now you have um, the sun in Sagittarius, Mercury is in Sagittarius, Saturn is in Sagittarius. 
and you've got this really big focus going on here in the area of true love, romance, creative self-expression. And so for many of you, you are working on creative projects or your work is being taken to the next level in a creative way, in some crea creative capacity. And isn't that why we're here? I mean, the whole reason we're here is to love and to love what we do and to be creative. And especially for you, Leo, because you rule this area of life, you rule the fifth house. And so, you know, you always want to be doing something that taps into your creativity, anything that makes you feel creative. And it doesn't have to be traditional. It doesn't have to be singing or dancing. It can be anything that you do that's authentic for you. Anything that you do that taps into your essence, your true nature, and makes you feel alive and makes you happy and brings joy to your life. And, you know, that can be working on cars. That can be doing accounting. It can be anything that you do that comes to you naturally. Those are your gifts. You always want to follow what comes natural to you and gives you passion. Those are always your clues for being on the right track. You're always on the right track when you're doing what comes natural to you, when you're doing what is your gift, what is your um, talent. And when you're tapping into that, you feel alive, you feel good. And it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter what's going on in the economies because the universe has unlimited abundance. And when you're tapping into your creativity, you're adding value to your life. And when you add value to your life, you add value to the lives of others. And that's why you're here. So you're going to love moving on here third week in November into Sagittarius. Now there's another event happening here on uh, the 24th and that has to do with um, Jupiter squaring Pluto. Now I like Jupiter even when he squares because he always brings positive energy. The challenge when something squares is it, we can do too much. We can go over the, you know, we eat too much. We drink too much. We talk too much. <laughs> and so it, it can be too much. And with Pluto, it's with obsession. So uh, Jupiter and Libra brings the action to your communication sector, how you think, how you speak, how you listen, your style of speaking, your style of listening, your perception, your intellect, your thoughts. And with it challenging Pluto in that area of work and health, you want to watch out for overloading yourself, doing too much. Uh, maybe you're, you, again, you're working on some creative project and you know, you're burning that midnight oil and you can't seem to shut it off. You can't seem to shut the brain off. Right. And so, you know, be aware of that, that we can go too far with the Jupiter Pluto aspect that goes exact on the 24th. And then it's back again, March 30th and August 4th, 2017. So this energy is going to be around for the next 10 months. And, you know, it, it, it's an ambitious energy. You, you can get a lot done with it. The challenge is, is it can, you, we can go too far with it. And, you know, it's like if you take a glass of water that's already full and you pour more water into it, it's not good because that water's going all over the table. So it's not, it's not, more is not good. Um, balance is the key. And so if you find yourself getting tired because you're doing too much, that's the universe saying, hey, you know, chill out, you know, t take a step back and take a day off, take a couple hours off, allow yourself to recharge your batteries, do a download, you know, one of those brain dumps, you know, where you just don't think about anything, you know, do something mindless, take a walk in nature. Nature is a fabulous way to replenish your mind, your body, your spirit, and, and just getting outdoors in the positive energy of nature can do a world of good for you. So be aware of when you are doing too much and 
that does not serve because that you know that is going to be uh, a concern because Jupiter's getting ready to oppose Uranus. Now, I love that energy because it can bring you sudden opportunities that are mind blowing, but it can also overload your nervous system. And it, it, you know, it's like you can feel like you're being electrocuted because there's just such, such uh, cosmic downloads coming through your crown chakra, through your, your mind and through your spinal column. And, you know, it's, it's to step you up and to open you up to uh, your creativity and maybe there's something you need to write, maybe there's something you need to publish. And so on that one side, it's great. But the other side is, you know, too much of, of anything is not good for us. And so, you know, Pluto is in that area of health and well-being and work. Life work balance is the key for all of us. Life is more important than work. It's not work life. It's life work. So taking care of you is the most important thing. And that's what the Scorpio energy is here to remind you of, you know, without you, nothing else matters. Take care of you, take care of your foundation, take care of your home, your inner being, your home, your outer home, your inner home, your outer home. That's feng shui. <laughs> and so, because the outer home is a reflection of the inner home. And so, so take care of the inner you the inner being and take care of your home environment that builds the strong foundation so that you can be focused on your creative projects. You can be focused on what you want to publish, what you want to broadcast, what you want to podcast, what you want to teach, what you want to share with the world. Jupiter is in the area of sharing your thoughts, your ideas, communicating with the masses. And so you're going to have that opportunity here these next couple of months in all of 2017 to really um, do some amazing things. And so stronger you are on the inside, the more you achieve in the world. Then you have the Sagittarius new moon on the 29th. Now this moon is different than the Scorpio moon because this moon is being challenged by Neptune and Neptune is direct. So with Neptune direct squaring the new moon, this is very challenging because it can make us confused. It can make you feel um, your structures are being dissolved and reality has left the room. <laughs> and so you want to pay attention to this energy Neptune is in that area of shared resources. It's in the area of banking. It's in the area of um, your partner's resources. And it's challenging that new moon in the area of your children, of creative self-expression and uh, true love and romance. So if you are in a relationship it's really important to pay attention to um, any deception that's going on. Again, don't step over the red flags. If there's any kind of warning here that you're getting from the universe, that's your higher self looking out for you. That's your soul talking to you. Pay attention to it because when Neptune challenges like this, people lie. People can deceive us. And Neptune is challenging this new moon. And as the moon separates, it will meet up with Saturn. And then you could get like this big awakening. And then a week later, uh, in December, the sun will couple with Saturn. And Saturn examines and tests whatever you're doing. And so, you know, under the illusion of Neptune, you could be thinking, oh, you know, this is such a wonderful whatever. And relationship, uh, investment, um, project, uh, my child. And then, you, you know, a week later you find out, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, um, that this was going on in this situation. And so 
don't make any major decisions at the Sagittarius new moon. Don't sign any contracts. Don't make any major purchases at that new moon. In fact, avoid the 12th of November as well, because that's when Mercury will be squared by Neptune. Uh, excuse me, on the 19th of uh, November, Mercury will be squared by Nep uh, Neptune. And so by the new moon in Sagittarius, Mercury will have moved off. However, the sun and the moon are being squared by Neptune. So, you know, it's game on on the 19th, and then it's exact on the uh, 29th. And so you just you don't want to make any major decisions when Mercury is squared by Neptune or the sun and the moon are squared by Neptune, this new moon, uh, because you don't have all the facts. You don't. Neptune is not about details. Neptune is about fantasy. It is about illusion. It is about creativity. It is about spirituality. It is about moving into other dimensions that do not have anything to do with the physical reality we reside in. That is Saturn's domain. Saturn rules the matrix. Neptune rules Nirvana. And so it is not the best time for making effective decisions or choices. And it can come back to bite you later on when you get that reality check from Saturn or down the road when you come to find out the real truth of what's going on. Now, what is it good for? There's always, you know, it's never totally negative. There's always opportunity here. And With Neptune, it is about really tapping into your creativity because the new moon is happening in the area of creative self-expression. So if you're using the new moon to work on your projects to create something, this is a fabulous energy. Or if you're using it to go deeper within self, to go on a spiritual journey, to um, meditate, to write music, to, to do things that have to do with the creative arts, that have to do with creative self-expression. It's a fabulous energy for that. In fact, that's what it's for. It's for creativity. There's no accident that it rules the music industry, the movie industry. Neptune rules Hollywood, and Hollywood is all fantasy. And so, I mean, you know, when you look at the, you know, the Brad and the Angelina, you know, right? They presented themselves as this amazing couple. And really, that was all a fantasy, wasn't it? Right? I mean, now eh, the truth is coming out. And you know, we could say that about the politicians as well. Um, but that is that is how it goes, right? That people can project an image, Neptune, but then the truth comes out, Saturn, Uranus, and we get the awakening, Uranus. And so we want to be really looking at uh, what's going on and hanging loose on any decisions. You do that, you are yippee skippy. You're going you're gonna to move into December with a big smile on your face and really happy that you were patient and took your time with whatever you're doing, didn't make any major decisions until December because that's when it really rolls in for you. Now, Venus will couple with Pluto on the 25th, and that is in the area of work for you. So that could be, you know, a significant day where you are um, looking at some sort of work relationship or work situation and paying attention to what you love and value, paying attention to what you need, and when you do that, you're doing what's right for you. So it's really important to um, pay attention to what is right for you, what is true for you, what do you need. And with Chiron moving direct on December 1st, this signals a resolution to any long-standing issues that you have been um, waiting for, whether it's in regards to your health or in regards to your finances, in regards to shared resources, there's a real healing coming in here for you. And 
solutions and resolutions. So, you know, love is on. You know, for those of you interested in love, you know, you do have the new moon there. You just got to be careful because, you know, on the one hand, the person can feel like the twin flame. They, they can feel like, wow, you know, this is amazing and magical and you could be fascinated by the person. Or they can be the imposter. Remember, spirit is always initiating us and we need those initiations so that we can develop greater self-mastery. And that's how we become masters at what we at what we do and who we are. And we're always being tested, especially when Neptune is challenging us, because we need that discernment, we need to trust the instincts, really trust your intuition. For those of you coupled, you know, is is um, you know, pay attention to what's going on with your partner. Do you need more romance in the relationship? You know, what do you need that uh, maybe not happening? You know, is, is, are you having fun together? Are you doing fun things together? With Mars in that area of relationships, it could be your, you know, your partner that's, uh, really pushing you to move ahead. And that's what soulmates do. You know, when, when someone is really our soulmate, they push and encourage us to be more than we think we can do. And that's the whole reason we're together is to be more together than, uh, than we are when we're single, right? Is, is when you come together with another person, it's to bring out the best in you and pull you forward. Just make sure that your partner is doing that with you. Now, as far as the finances go, you know, I don't see any challenges to the finance. Neptune's been in that area of shared resources for quite some time. And, you know, is it doesn't hurt to pay attention to, you know, where the money is going out, you know, your expenses uh, here with this Sagittarius new moon. Maybe that's another thing too, for some of you, you know, you, you know, your kids have some, uh, you know, soccer expenses coming up or this expense or college expense that you didn't, um, see coming. And it's like, Oh no, now I got to pay for this. I got to pay for these uniforms. Oh, um, but you know, you're going to be a powerful manifester here in December and next year. So don't, don't even worry about it. Don't put your energy there. Focus on abundance, focus on attraction, because that will bring you more and greater abundance and greater cash flow. I see your health improving too. It, you know, so for any of you that have been having, you know, some uh, health challenges going on, you're going to see um, a solid improvement in November with your health, if you're taking good care of you. And that is the key, is to take good care of you. Practice that extreme self-care. And you go to my website and use that program. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, favoring, sharing, and Google Plusing my podcast. Leo, you're so awesome. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. And if you would like for me to take a detailed look at your astrology, it's very easy. The link is below in the show more section. It takes you to my astrology page. You purchase session upon checkout, you get the link to my schedule and we're working together. Or if you're interested in coaching, you want to focus on a new uh, business idea or some creative project or love and relationships. That link is below in the show more section. You go to my coaching page. You purchase session upon checkout, you get the link to my schedule, and we're coaching you. So until next time, Leo, listen to your soul. It's really speaking to you.